Welcome back to Bully Ball, a 49er podcast. Today is our post-game recap of the 49ers' first preseason game against the Green Bay Packers. Uh, the 49ers would go on to win 28-21. to We're going to break down the game for you, give you some players that played well, some that didn't play very well, and we are going to be bringing back our Bully of the Week, which is a tradition we like to do here where we highlight one player for bullying the opposing team. So tune in and, you know, like, subscribe, and share. Uh, we're growing the channel thanks to our 73 subscribers right now. Let's get started. Tony Montana, Tony Montana, Tony Montana, check up on my ear. Tony Montana, Tony Montana, Tony Montana, I'm about to cut the- all right, welcome into the channel. Um, as you guys know, the 49ers played the Packers on Friday night, and you know it was a it was great to have some 49er football back. We've had training camp, but it's nothing like an actual live game. Um, the 49ers had a ton of people not play, which we expected. You know, your stars, Trent Williams, George Kittle, uh, your star receivers, Debo and Ayuk. A um, couple O linemen, pretty much the whole starting defense did not touch the field <laughs> except for uh, Hufanga. But there were still some great things happening in the game, and we're going to jump right into that. Go ahead and take over. Yeah. So, you know, it was, inter- it was it's great to have 49ers football back on, that's for sure. Um, you know, preseason some of my favorite games to watch just because you get to see the whole team, you know. You get to see the depth of the team, um, not just the guys that are just always starting. So it's good to see your depth and your backups uh, playing well. So you love to see it. So like Joseph mentioned, uh, we'll just give you a quick breakdown, recap of what happened. So the final score was 28-21. Um, for a passing for the Niners, Nate Sudfield went eight for 11 with 103 yards and a touchdown. Trey Lance went four for five, 92 yards and a touchdown. Brock Purdy went three for six, 36 yards and a touchdown. So all three quarterbacks throwing touchdowns, which you like to see. From a rushing standpoint, uh, Tyrion Davis Price had 10 carries for 36 yards. Jermichael Hasty had five carries for 36 yards. Jordan Mason had six carries for 30 yards. Trey Sermon had six carries for 11 yards. And then Trey Lance had one carry for seven yards. Receiving standpoint, um, top guy, obviously, which is kind of, if you watch the game, you know why, was Danny Gray with two receptions for 99 yards and a touchdown. Ray Ray McLeod which if you watched as well, you know why. Four receptions, 63 yards and a touchdown. Tanner Hudson, the tight end, had two receptions, 27 yards and a touchdown. And then a couple other guys with the one catch apiece. And then the leader in tackles on defense was Oren Burks, who had six tackles. All righty. Um, that's pretty much it for the stats of the game. Is there anything else you want to touch on with that? Yeah, one last stat that I would like to add. You know, underrated, some nobody going to talk about, but you did have uh, Robbie Gold kick a 50-yard field goal. And as we know, last season, Robbie Gold struggled kicking field goals in the regular season. Uh, He brought it back up in the postseason. But good to see he did take a big shot on uh, the kickoff, he he was the one that stopped the returner, and he took a big shot. So glad nothing came of that because you you need Robbie Gold this year. Definitely, hundred um, percent. So just to show some clips, real quick of this one is going to be of Ray Ray McLeod with his touchdown. This route was insane. Like, this is stuff that you put on the highlight tape, obviously. Let me pull it up here real quick. 
So this is a Ray 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 McLeod. This was Nate Sudfeld's uh, first pass in the game. So Ray Ray McLeod is down here. Let's play it. Boom. I mean, this dude <laughs> gets sniped. Dude is on the floor and he's wide open. And when I was watching it live, I was like, what happened? Why is he so wide open? Was it blown coverage? But no, it was because this corner got sniped by that route. That route was just incredibly, like, just clean. You know, he loved to see it. He loved to see it from Ray Ray McLeod. He did have a fumble, which, you know, we've noticed he's been having in this past time with the Steelers. So something to watch for right there. But that route and touchdown was crazy. Yeah, that was a great play. It was right after a commercial break or something, too. So, you know, I wasn't really paying attention. Just started looking back up and he's wide open. I was like, what the hell happened? Yep. <laughs> had to wait. Had to wait for the replay. But with that being said, let's hop right into um, our bully of the week. We'll get that done first. So I'll go ahead and pull up the clips while you um, give the people a breakdown of why this person's our bully of the week. So like we said, our bully of the week is somebody that's really just exemplifying that bully ball style. You know, somebody that just going out there. And just putting in the work, just bullying people, throwing these fools around. So the bully this week is going to be Spencer Burford, right guard. You know, this was his first playing time with the Niners. Uh, he's starting right guard right now. And this dude was just destroying people. Here's a couple clips of some stuff that he was doing. If you want to go ahead and break down these clips. Yeah, so you see him reach blocking this uh, D-tackle right here. And... As you know, he, he, um, with the, oh, what happened? He gets in front of him and then the running back cuts behind him and he just gets him out of the way. You know, nothing, nothing too crazy bully in there, but he's moving a 300 pound guy about five, six yards off the line of scrimmage. So you love to see it. We got another clip here. And he's going to be, where is he, right here? I think he's right off the yeah, screen he right like here. Yeah, he kind of like comes in. Yeah. And... All right. So he's right there. You see him in pass pro right here. Let me run that back. So you see him taking his man to the ground, getting him out of the play. Trey Lance is able to step up in the pocket. Or that's Nate Sudfeld right Nate there, Sudfeld, actually. Yeah. All right. And then one more. As we can see, he's right here. And he's going to pull, and he's going to kick out the D end, and just he tosses him to the floor. Just mean. That's some stuff you just, see like Trent Williams doing too. Yeah. Just and like literally... we all know, Burford was training with Trent Williams this offseason, so I think there's some things rubbing off on him. I have one more clip uh, to share of Burford. Before we get off the bully of the week, um, so start here. This is from the SF Diners. I know it's a little blurry. So Burford's right here, number seventy-four, taking Joe Staley's old number, and just gets him down, and then just throws him back. You know that that is like a patented. Uh, Trent Williams move, you know, you don't really see a lot of O-linemen doing this, kind of just like throwing him down to the floor like that, and then he obviously throws him on his ass too. So, as you can see, that is our bully of the week for the week, Spencer and Burford. The, and we've spoke on this a couple times, but for those that don't know, um, Spencer Burford and Jason Poe were the only two 49er O-linemen that took up Trent Williams on his offer to train with him in the off season and we don't have any clips but jason poe was doing some great things as well so you know those linemen should have really took um trent williams up on that offer and it's a little disappointing that only two of them did yeah um i actually want to show a couple more clips we had um two players in the running for bully of the week 
but they just didn't make the cut because it, they might add one play where, you know, Spencer Burford was tossing people the whole game. So let me add this to the screen. Here we have um, Demetrius Flanagan Fowles. He is going to be, I believe this is him right here, correct? Mm -hmm. Yep. And you see him fill and just plant the dude. Textbook you tackle right there. Yeah, you don't really see uh, linebackers hitting like that anymore these days. I mean, I definitely feel like the Niners have some of the probably the hardest hitting linebackers with Aziz, Alshire, Fred Warner, Dre Greenlaw, and then Flanagan Fowles with that one too. So definitely, you know, you love to see it. And then actually, this clip is better. I believe. No, this one's better. All right. So then we had Telenoa Hufanga. Um, what is happening? So it's going to play back again. Clean hit. You know, uh, we all thought it was a flag because they did throw a flag on this play, but just comes up and crushing, crushing hit on this running back. Yeah. You love to see that too from a strong safety. You know, if you're going to have somebody playing in the box, you got to be able to hit. And, you know, Hufanka definitely brings that physicality that you want in need in the box. So you love to see that for sure. And there's a funny meme going around of the guy's face. He's like making, <laughs> he's like, oh. <laughs> as he's going back, it's hilarious. But those are the runners, runner ups for bully of the week. You love it. You love it when an offensive player is the bully of the week, because you expect it to be a defensive player. So Definitely. great job, Spencer Burford. Yep. So now we'll jump into the next segment. Um, we're going to do five players whose stock rose with this game and then five players whose stock is probably a little bit down from this game. Um, so I'll start with one of my guys whose stock is up from this game. Um, one of them being left guard Aaron Banks. You know, we came into this season not really knowing what to expect from Banks because there's a lot of rumors and stuff that he looked like garbage last year and he wasn't ready. He was too big. He was slow, yada, yada. You know, they're saying that he wasn't looking very good. Um, obviously, this game wasn't perfect. You know, he might have had a couple blown pass blocks or whatever it may be. But he did look a lot better than I expected. And I just want to share a few clips from Aaron Banks that they showed throughout the game. Which is encouraging, you know, because we're going to need a solid O-line for Trey Lance. You know, if you have a bad O-line, Trey Lance is going to play not good. So here we go. It's from Brandon Thorne, I think his name was. So Aaron Banks going to highlight him. Pass protection. Just perfect, you know. It's what you love to see. Run blocking, moving dudes. Love to see it. Pass pro again, you know, gets a very, pancake. Very right active there. feet there. That was nice. Yeah. Picks up the stunt too, which was impressive right here. Because unexperienced O-linemen, you know, they're not too used to seeing stunts like this and everything. But look, they pass it off good. He picks up the D-tackle. The D-end goes inside. And that was that, you know. So I thought he did very good. Um he had a clean stat sheet, didn't give up any sacks or pressures, I don't believe. So you love to see it. But like we said, you know, it wasn't perfect. There might have been a rep or two where he might have messed up, but I thought he played an overall very well game. So stock up for Aaron Banks, in my opinion. Yeah, I like to see that uh, run block rep where he's actually moving the D tackle off the ball because um, when we drafted him, I was watching a lot of o-line people break him down and they had said like a hey, he's a smart dude like stunts and stuff usually aren't going to get by him but 
he's just kind of soft. Like he's not going to move anybody. Um, so I like to see that rep. And then just keeping keeping the feet moving and keeping the quarterback clean. Because I remember on the first drive of the game, there was one pass play where Spencer Burford and Aaron Banks got driven back like five yards on the same play. And I was like, I even tweeted out, I was like, hey, this ain't this don't look good <laughs> because it was the same exact play and they both got driven back. But after that, both players came back and they settled in and played well. Same with uh, Rendell. He was impressive as well. Definitely. Do you want to give uh, one of your stock up, guys? Yes. So I will go ahead and jump to the defensive side of the ball with Sam Womack. Um, as we know, he's in a battle with Darquise Denard for the starting slot position. And this dude just came out and was making plays. You know, it was kind of reminiscent of uh, Tyron Matthew in college. The dude, the dude would just make plays. The ball's thrown to him. He's making a play happen. A run fits coming his way. He's a tiny dude. He's filling that hole and not letting the running back get any extra yardage. Um, two interceptions. One, he breaks up the ball midair, intercepts it as the receiver is going down to the floor. But the second one, uh, he's playing in the slot. He gets turned around mid-route, and he does a full 360, but still gets his eyes back to the ball and makes a clean interception over the middle. Uh, I couldn't... I didn't pull that clip up, but just playmaking corner. I believe he was um, the leading PBU guy in college last year, correct? Or maybe it was in his full college career. Yeah, I remember he had like the most pass breakups in like three years or something. Yeah, so small guy. What is he, like 5'10"? 5'9". But he has huge arms, like super long arms. And he's very sticky in coverage. Um, Looks like another fifth-round gem for the 49ers. Yeah, like you said, his long arm. So he's 5'9", but he has the same wingspan as Richard Sherman, who is 6'3". So he has that perfect build for that slot position, which was great because, as we all know, K1 Williams is now with the Jets? Broncos. Broncos? With the Broncos. So we're going to need a slot corner to step up. And Sam Womack definitely looked promising in this first game. You know, it is still preseason, so you don't want to get too high on him. But he did look promising. Um, Some stats on him. He had the highest defensive grade, according to PFF, at 92.6. He had 18 coverage snaps, two targets, no catches allowed, and two interceptions. So in that first interception... You know, some people might say, oh, it was like a fluke because it kind of like the ball kind of just bounced into his hands. But he was right there in coverage. You know what I mean? He was so close in coverage that he had the opportunity to have that ball bounce into his hands like that. So it was definitely impressive. And then, like Joseph said, on the second interception, he just sticky coverage, got turned around and made that pick. So Sam Womack definitely stocks up. Somebody to watch. Hopefully – The Niners give him a couple more reps with the starters um, this week in the joint practices at Minnesota because Um, I think he could use it. Here's here's one of the plays. Yeah. So that was was the one that I was saying, you know, where he was – that coverage was tight. You know, he had that tight coverage to where he had the opportunity to have that ball bounce into his hands. So, and then here's, and here's the, the other one. one. Or this is the first one, I believe. Second. This one's the second. This is the second. Yeah. You want to highlight him where he is? He is right here. So I'll go back. So he's right here in the slot. And just watch him. (sighs) 
Yeah, I mean, that coverage is just crazy. You know, that just sticky coverage. And he even got praise from Tyree Kill, who's one of the best wide receivers in the NFL. And he's, Tyree Kill said 26 from the Niners is nice, you know. So that's good to see, too, that other people are taking notice. Um, so moving on to our next stock up. So this is number three player stock up. My guy is going to be Danny Gray. You know, he had that great catch from Trey Lance. He also had another good catch in route that he ran over the middle, which was a good one right before halftime. Um, something I didn't know, he's pretty big. They said on the broadcast that he was 6'2", 200, which I didn't realize he was that big. I thought he was yeah, kind of good smaller, size. but 6'2", 200. Um, I'll show that one play. That of of course everybody's probably seen by now. You know, great the speed, his speed right here, you can really it really shows. Really shows. Give me a second. I don't know why this isn't going full screen. So Danny Gray is in the slot right here. Trey Lance at quarterback. In the first series with the run by Sermon. Gonna take a deep shot down the left. And just burns number six, you know, just on a slot fade and just burns him for an easy touchdown. Great throw by Trey as well. And just like, look at that. Look at that separation. Probably has like three, four yards of separation just right there. And then just takes off, doesn't let him get shoelaced and scores the touchdown. There goes Trey to, I think he was running, yeah, running down to grab the football which you love to see from Trey because he did that twice for he did it once for Purdy on his first touchdown and then once for uh, Danny Gray as well. So Trey Lance really showing his leadership, but my stock up is on Danny Gray, you know, that speed, the Niners love having a speed receiver like that. Travis Benjamin, Marquise Goodwin in the past, past and then now Danny Gray, who's a rookie, who hopefully can stick with the team for a while and be that speedster for him. So stock up for Danny Gray. And I believe how you said he picked up the ball for him. I believe I saw a post saying that I think George Kittle did that for Trey Lance. Mm -hmm. It was George Kittle or Trent Williams did that for Trey Lance on his first touchdown. And then someone had done that for George Kittle on his first touchdown. So you love to see, you know, just the growth from all the guys. But like you had said, Danny Gray, you love to see that touchdown. Um, you'd love to see the broken tackle because uh, he, he easily could have went out of bounds right, right where he caught the ball. And I was impressed with the other catch over the middle yeah. because everyone knows Danny Gray's a burner, but you want to see him do the other things as well. That catch over the middle was nice. I wish on that uh, out route where he caught it out of bounds, that like 10-yard out, yeah. I wish he would have got both feet in on that one. But dude looks like he's going to be a good player, going to make a compliment this year. He did uh, end the game with back and hip sensitivity, according to Kyle Shanahan. Um, I don't think he said he's going to miss any time or anything, but some to monitor. Great game Correct. by him, though. Mm -hmm. um, next player, might as well go straight to him. You had said the great pass, Trey Lance. You know, everybody all offseason wanted to talk about what he couldn't do, what he wasn't good at, that he won't be better than Jimmy. You know, just let the dude show what he can do and then speak on it. Um, we saw Trey Lance... Of avoid pressure you know he had some terrible blocking a couple times where people were rushing free at him and he just has great pocket awareness he stepped up in the pocket looked back downfield to throw and then took off and slid for a seven yard gain you love to see that um obviously the long touchdown you love to see him finding his receivers finding the matchup that he liked and getting the ball out. And even, like I said, that 10 yard out to Danny Gray, that was a catchable ball. Um, I believe Brandon Ayuk 
probably makes that catch inbound. So accurate day for the guy. He did have one or two high, uh, throws that were high, but you know, just overall played very well. Yeah. Um, if you want a good breakdown too of his performance, if you look up the the QB school on YouTube. It's a former NFL quarterback, J.T. O'Sullivan. He does a great breakdown of his performance of every throw throughout the game. So go take a look at that video if you want to see a little bit more. Definitely up on uh, Trey Lance. And then our final player that is going to have stock up for us is going to be, you know, we're a little biased, but our guy, Jason Poe. You know, that dude looked legit. You know, he looked like he did in college. You can see his athleticism getting to the second level, getting to those linebackers and being sticky as well. You know, not just letting him get by him or like swim, move him or just shed him. He was sticky the whole time, moving the linebackers out of position and also the D tackles, you know, and those run blocks. He was making huge holes, huge cutback holes. And if you're watching the game, Greg Papa and the other guy, I forget his name. Tim Ryan. Tim Ryan. They were talking about him a lot because he was opening holes on the backside for these running backs to cut through, which you love to see because, you know, they even said it too, Jason Poe, he's a shorter guy, which helps out in the trenches because it's a shorter guy, you know, lower pad level wins. So you love to see it. He played extremely well. He had a couple good uh, pull plays, too, where he was kicking people out. Good in pass protection. He had one one false start, and he had one pass protection that he uh, missed. He missed, like, the guy stunted off to the side of the center, and Jason Poe just kind of didn't pick him up. But besides those couple plays, he looked extremely well. So yeah, I, I think believe- he's making a great effort to get a 53-man uh, roster spot. Jason Poe was a PFF's fifth graded offensive player for the 49ers in the game. Fifth highest. Um, And he's just an elite mover, you know. When that second O-line was out there, he was the only one that really stood out like, hey, this dude is getting to the second level every time. This dude is pulling and he's kicking out the D-end every time. Um like you said, he missed that one pass protection. Um, but the dude had said, like, hey, I've never been taught, like, an offensive scheme until I got to the NFL uh, or, like, pass blocking technique. And he just has all the raw talent. You love to see it. The dude was making play after play. Um, and it was just great to see, you know. He did look shorter than everyone, but he was the only one moving everybody on that second O-line. It was great to see. I spoke with him after the game and I told him congrats, and he said thanks, you know, just taking it one day at a time. So the dude's grinding. He loved to see it. And, And like you had said, the running game was pretty atrocious the whole game. And then the moment him and Jordan Mills were out there on that right side, huge, huge holes were opening up. Uh, they actually, Hasty and Jordan Mason looked pretty good running on that right side of the O line towards the end of the game. Yeah, and there's obviously a bunch of players too that have stock up that played well, but obviously we're not going to mention all, mention them all. So we'll stick with those five. Now we'll jump into our five players with the stock down, who we thought maybe hurt their stock a little bit with this game. If you want to go ahead and lead us off. So, as we know, a guy that we both were high on heading into this season, Tavarius Moore. Um, You know, didn't really see him doing anything in the back end. The only time you saw him was when he dropped down uh, to cover the slot and got beat off the line for a touchdown. Uh, I actually have that play. I'll pull it up real quick. But that's my first guy with the stock down because, you know, you wanted to see a little more from him. But, 
Yeah. Uh, Talanoa Hufanga looked to have uh, that spot locked down to me. And, you know, it could also be just rust because he didn't play at all last year since he got hurt, like, I think in what, training camp, right, last year? Um, I believe or something so. like that. Like, he didn't play at all. So it could just be knocking off the rust, but definitely didn't look as promising as we would have liked to see. Just beat off the line on the go route. Touchdown. Easy. Too too easy. Yeah. Definitely. And it's a little discouraging as well because Tavarius Moore, I believe, ran like a 4-3 coming out of college. But, you know, just one, one big bad play that everyone's going to see. We'll see if he could bounce back this week in Minnesota. Yeah. Um, so my guy for stock down this week is going to be Javon Kinlaw. You know, he didn't really get the – I was listening to the Locked On 49ers podcast, and they're like, yeah, he didn't really get the starters treatment. You know what I mean? Like, he was out there for, I think, like the whole first half, yeah. which is, is it good? You know, do they want to get him the reps, or is it like this guy's struggling, he has to get reps to get better? You know, who knows? Um, there was a couple plays too on some run plays that the Packers were doing and Kinlaw just got washed down. You know what I mean? He was getting moved off the ball. He wasn't holding the line of scrimmage that you would have seen from a huge guy like him. Um, so it wasn't very encouraging, especially being a first round pick and an early first round pick. Well, I think number 13 or something like that. Um, you know, and this was another guy coming off injury too, so it could just be rust. We are just in the preseason. But with that, those offensive linemen for the Packers aren't their first team, and he's getting washed down like this. So not very encouraging, but hopefully he can pick it back up after this week for sure. Yeah, there were a couple times I saw him get double teamed, and you'd like to just see him hold the line right there. You know, when you're double teamed, you're pretty much – wasted on the play but you at least want to see him hold the line and he was getting driven back so yeah. it didn't i agree with that one as well he was on my list as well yeah. uh, my next player i know which one you're gonna say next so i'll leave that one for you and i'll say dante johnson you know long time vet played good in crunch time but there was one play in specifically where they threw like a screen and he should have tackled them for like a three yard gain. And he just took the worst angle you could possibly take. And the dude ended up scoring like a 30 yard touchdown. Um, and then he, he got hurt too. He hurt his ribs and is going to be out a couple weeks. So Dante Johnson stock down might not make the team. Yeah. To be fair, he was playing safety. They have that dude playing everywhere, which is insane. But that dire, yeah, that angle. It was funny because Papa and Tim Ryan were talking about him. They were like, oh, yeah, this guy, he's great. He plays everywhere. And then the next play, he gets bad. Yeah. Um, so my next guy for stock down, this dude <laughs> looked terrible. I don't even know how he's on the team, honestly. Justin School. That guy was getting beat like a drum. First play in, he gets tossed. I think that's like the sack on Trey Lance was his first play in. And then every other play in, like pass protection, this dude's getting blown up, just destroyed. It like started to worry me. Like, why is Trey Lance even in here? He's going to get hurt with this dude blocking for him. Um, it was bad. Like, it was really bad. I thought, I thought he was decent, too, his rookie year with Brunskill. But... This this last game was bad. So stock down on school. There's no way he should be making the team. Yeah, he uh he was coming off of major injury too, I believe, but yeah, you just don't look ready. Um that touchdown pass to Danny Gray. Luckily the three interior O linemen held up because both him and the other tackle got destroyed. And luckily, Trey Lance had a tiny place to step up into or else that play would have been dead. Um, it's very, very concerning because 
Uh, we haven't mentioned it yet, but Mike McGlinchey has some knee irritation and he's probably going to be out for a bit. So if Justin School is the backup, you know, I believe Colin McKivitz will play there instead, but it's worrying you. Hope, hopefully you know? Jordan Mills, too. They can give yeah. him some run because he looked pretty good. But, yeah, I totally agree. Um, one more guy I wanted to mention, stock down a little bit, was George Odom. You know, I wanted to see him because I've never seen him play before, and he had a couple decent plays in uh, run defense, but – he didn't look very well to me. Um, I, I thought he could possibly compete for the other safety spot. And I think that's Hufanga's job, like 100%. Yeah. I mean, if he was able to compete for it, I think that just would have been an added incentive because we really did bring him in just for special teams yeah. contribution because I heard he's like a great special teams player. Um, One guy I wanted to mention before we get off, of the stock down dudes was um, Ty Davis price uh, because there was a lot of talk in training camp saying that, Oh, this dude's like physical. He's a hard runner. He's going to do good in training camp in like preseason when it's live action. And he didn't look that great to me. I mean, none of the running backs really did look very good, but he definitely didn't look like anything promising, especially for a third round pick. Um, I believe it was a screen pass. He had it hit it. He had it hit like right in his hands. Perfect pass, chest level, hit him in the hands, and it just like bounced off like brick hands. Bad. Um, so he didn't look very promising. But like we said, also none of the other running backs looked too good either. But stock down for Ty Davis Price for me. To me, yeah, I was a little disappointed with a sermon. You know, he didn't have great blocking when he w was getting the ball and Shanahan said he was impressed with them, but you know, just in those two didn't look great to me. Um, Jordan Mason looked like the best running back on the 49ers to me yesterday. And they gave him the ball like three times. <laughs> and I believe it is possible that they're trying to get him to the practice squad this year. So they're trying not to play him much, but I don't know, man. He just looked like the most explosive, you know, best vision back out there to me. Yeah, definitely. I agree. Was there anything else you wanted to touch on before we bounce out of here? Yeah, so just a couple updates on injuries. Um, so we had Drake Jackson. Uh, he had a got a stinger in his shoulder. He should be fine. They said they are going to do more tests, but he was impressing to me early on, but he obviously went out pretty early in the game. Do uh, you have any thoughts on him? Yeah, I mean, he should be good. Just a little stinger. A little concerning at first because he wasn't moving it, but good news that it's a stinger, so it's good to hear. And then I believe we had said Brunskill's going to be out with a hamstring injury a couple weeks, so pretty much a lock now with a Jake Brendel as your center and uh, Spencer Burford as your right guard which we we are happy with um this Brun report, a good backup yeah this report says that he was supposed to miss three to four weeks with that hamstring so yeah and then i had mentioned the mike mcglinchy knee irritation they didn't give a timeline on that um very very concerning to me um good news is like i had mentioned Jordan Mills did look very good to me when he did play. I thought I saw something with McGlinchey that it was just going to be a, like a short, short thing. Like it wasn't anything too long. Like it might've been a week or something, but yeah, I, I, yeah. they didn't say anything crazy, but it's still is just concerning. Yeah. You know? First game back and already dealing with some, um, I said Dante Johnson with the ribs. I, I think it's that one's going to be a while. They didn't give me a timeline. Danny Gray with the back and hip sensitivity should be back this week. Um, I I forget this guy's first name. Steve Robinson, he's a linebacker. Oh, Curtis Robinson, linebacker, groin injury. And then you have 
Eman Mosley and Hassan Ridgeway should be back this week. Should be um they should be playing in the joint practices with the Vikings. And then Eric Armstead as well is good to be back this week, but they don't want him to play against the other team. They want to take it slow with them. So he should be back next week. Yeah. Any thoughts on smart. those? Yeah, I mean Get to come out of that first game pretty healthy. You know, a couple of minor injuries. Brunskill was hurt before the game already. Or no, he got hurt during the game, didn't he? I don't know. I don't. I didn't see him play. I think they said he played one rep, and then he got pulled. So, but besides that, you come out pretty healthy, which is good. So, you know, just got to keep it. Uh, got to hope that it holds up. One more clip I wanted to show before we bounce out of here was... Um, by like a third team linebacker, Marcelino McCray ball, McCrary ball, something like that. This dude on his pick, I mean, this Jordan Elliott says when Kyle Shadan gets in the lab and draws something up with Marcelino McCray ball lined up at tight end. Yeah, he look looked like this, a dang this dude. <laughs> yeah. He looked like a running back to me. This dude is so fast. This he's rocked up too. He's yoked. Like, look at him running that ball. He does look like a running back. He's cutting in, he's duking <laughs> dudes. Like, he looks like a legit ball carrier. Um, so, yeah, I just thought that was interesting. You look good. That pick, you know, that's it's crazy. There's our new kick returner. <laughs> Man, it's just insane the depth that linebacker the 49ers have. They by far have the best linebacking core in the league. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Is there anything else you want to touch on before we bounce? Yep, so the 49ers will be in Minnesota. I believe they have joint practices. Is it Wednesday, Thursday, or Tuesday? Something Wednesday. like that. Two of those days, they have joint practices with the Vikings. Um, so we should be hearing about those practices. And then they play the Vikings someday over the weekend. I think so Saturday. Is it Saturday? I think so. So we'll be doing our pregame show like we did this week. Thanks for everyone that tuned in live. We will be live again the day of the game uh, for the pregame primer. And then we'll be live Sunday again for the postgame recap. So thanks for everyone that's been subscribing and tuning into all of our content. We appreciate you. Um, You know, leave a like, subscribe, and give us a follow on Twitter and on Instagram at SFBullyBall. That's all I got. We're 27 subscribers away from 100. You know, we, we're trying to hit that mark before the regular season. So I think there's like three more weeks before that. So we appreciate if you guys can help us get there. Um, stay tuned. We're going to be pushing out some good content during the season. And just uh, like Joseph said, like, comment, subscribe. See you guys next week. Peace. Yep, we'll see you next week. Turn it back. Money!